In this presentation, we will turn on the class tracking feature. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company dashboard. We're going to go into the settings to turn on the class tracking feature. We're going to do that by going up to the cog in the upper right-hand side. So on the cog in the upper right-hand side, we're looking under the Your Company settings. Within the Your Company settings, I'm going to go into the Account and Settings area. Then we're going to scroll on down to the bottom amount on the on the tab to the left or the bottom area on the tab to the left the advanced area so we are in the advanced settings these are advanced options down here so then within the advanced settings we want to go to the class tracking we're in these categories so within categories we're going to be turning on the class tracking so we're just going to turn on the class tracking and then i'm going to track classes we have the warning sign here if a class isn't assigned. I think that's a good thing to do for the not-for-profit. And that means if you enter a transaction and don't assign a class, it'll actually tell you, say, hey, you didn't assign a class. And then you can assign one out. Then you have the item here, which has one to entire transaction or one to each row in a transaction. The default is to have each row. I think that's a good thing to do because it's possible that you might have a transaction where you can have multiple items in it and you might assign different classes to those items. Then you have the track locations might be useful to you in some cases. I'm not going to be turning on the track locations for the purposes of our practice problem. So we're going to go ahead and say save. And now we're going to have that class tracking on. That's going to be important because it allows us to add what I would call kind of like that added dimension if I jump over to our Excel sheet. And that's going to allow us to make reports such as this where we can break out the items uh, with donor restrictions and items without donor restrictions. You can imagine those basically being classes now. If we were to run a statement of activities or P&L, profit and loss income statement, we can then break that information out with the use of classes between different classes, which we can label in this case, uh, without donor restrictions and with donor restrictions. So that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.